Well, as a theater critic, I spend so many nights on the aisle. Well, if I'm lucky. Sometimes they put me right in the middle, and I've got to step over people and be scrunched up next to people. But that's what critics love. They love to be on the aisle. And more than anything else, my guest on the phone right now loves to be on the aisle with his co-host of a TV show that they have done together for 17 years. That show is two on the aisle. It's a theater critic review show, kind of like what Siskel and Ebert used to do for the movies, and it airs still on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, Channel 56, every other Friday at 8 o'clock in the evening, and you can also see a bunch of episodes at YouTube.com. So, Charles Gross, congratulations on 17 years of two on the aisle, and welcome Dave. to the Tony Show. Good to be here. Yeah, and, and also thank you for inviting me to be on your annual Tony Roundup show. We had, a, we had a great time having you last night, Dave. Thank you, thank you. And anyone who did not watch it on MNN, and frankly, that's probably most of your listeners because, you know, it's only in Manhattan or uh, if you live in Bergen County, New Jersey, not on the same date, but uh, you can get it on Time Warner Cable there. But the Tony Award show is on YouTube, and if you want to see Mr. DGB on it with uh, Jeff and myself, just YouTube and then Two on the Isle and Tony's. That Jeff would be Jeff Goodman, who is very often my co-host on Dave's Gone By on Sunday nights at 11 on this station. But onward to Broadway and this, I think, pretty terrific season that we've had. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that it's been a special and pretty good... It's been a different season. And we've had some very innovative musicals, certainly, uh, in that area. And we've, uh, we've had some pretty nice plays, too. And a couple of excellent revivals. Yeah, well, that's that's what <laughs> you get a little of each. That that's makes true. a pretty darn good season. I, so let's let's go right to the musicals because okay. one of your categories that you're going to be talking about is best actor in a musical. Why don't you read them off and, and uh, tell us about them? Best, uh, let's see, best performance by a leading actor in a musical: Daniel Evans and in the Park with George, Lin Manuel Miranda in the Heights, Stu, that's the whole name, Stu. Passing Strange, uh, Polo Sot, uh, Rogers and Hammerstein, South Pacific, and uh, Tom Wopat, A Catered Affair. Now, which do you think, Charlie, will win? I think we can knock out uh, Tom Wopat. Um, in addition to loving him in The Dukes of Hazard, I've loved a lot of his Broadway appearances, but I really felt he was out of sync in A Catered Affair, and frankly, I was not a big fan of the musical to begin with. I kind of like the musical, but I agree with you on Wopat. I think it was a little miscast here. So, of those other four, you've got Daniel Evans. Yeah, well, Daniel Evans, who had to step into Mandy Patinkin's very large shoes and Sunday in the Park with George. A wonderful job in the first act uh, as, as George Surratt. A fair job in the second act as uh, Surratt's uh, grandson. Okay. So, I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen um, for him. Now, Lin-Manuel, Miranda, and Stu have uh, two things, in, one thing in common. They both are the leads in their sh- respective shows, mm-hmm. and they both were ri- or you know, are writers of their respective shows. Right, the shows couldn't really exist without them. They, they're, it, it sprang out of them. Well, this is true, but, you know, Stu, it's, it's so obviously autobiographical, and basically, he does not actually play himself, but he's there singing, playing his guitar, and commenting right. on the action uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda is actually playing a role, a uh, bodega owner. If I re- if I were the produ- producing the shows, I'd rather have to replace Lynn Manuel Miranda than Stu. Got it. Now, that, that's fair. But so, which again do you think has the inside shot for a win in this category? I think it's very tough because I, I expect In the Heights is going to do some Tony sweeping. Ah, oh, okay. Here. Okay. Um, even so, you've got a very well received South Pacific. And you have a really good Polo Zot. Yeah, and he won the, show. the Drama Desk Award, I think, for for that role. So and so, I would not be at all surprised if he walked away with it with the award. Uh huh. Now, who would you vote for? Polo Zot. Uh-huh. And uh, I think second would be uh, Lin Manuel Miranda. Cool, cool. Now, staying with musicals, yes. we're also going to talk about the books. These are, these are the librettos. This is you know the stuff that they do when they're not singing. And the nominees for the Tony on this are Mark O'Donnell and Thomas Meehan for Cry Baby, Chiara Alegria Yudis for In the Heights, Stu, again, for Passing Strange, and Douglas Carter Bean for the Zany Xanadu. Okay. Now, I think you have to first understand two things. Number one, a book is a lot more than just the dialogue. Yes, the book yeah, is yeah. the shape of the musical. It is the outline 
of the musical. It is a very important part and probably the hardest part of the show to get right. And I think it's also, uh, the second thing is, it's interesting to note the Thomas Mean show, that Meehan show, rather, that was not nominated this year. Good point. Young Frankenstein. And I really think there, there seems to be a major Mel Brooks backlash on Broadway this season. I mean, fine, Young Frankenstein may not have been the producers, but it was still a good show. Very funny, I thought. And frankly, the book there was as strong as any of these, uh, with the possible exception of Xanadu, and I'll get to that in just a second. Okay. So there really seems to be either they're upset that, uh, you know, this is not another producer's, although it is a very good play. I frankly enjoyed it a lot more than Crybaby, for example. Uh-huh, okay. And frankly, I enjoyed it more than Passing Strange. Now, but getting to the uh, shows that have been nominated. Right. Well, those, um, those two have. In the high, well, right. Well, Cry, I don't think Crybaby... Um, was that good a book? Okay. It was not a, it was not a good book. So that leaves us in the heights passing and passing strange. Now, these are shows that are, have gotten acclaim and popularity because they are just so different ways of presentation for the musicals. Good point. But the, but the presentations are really not so much the books. In actuality, these are so-so books. I mean, in the heights, it's got a nice story, but you know, a fairly well-treaded story. Passing Strange kind of gets a little repetitious yes. and peters out uh, toward the end. So it's the staging, it's the innovative use, you know, it's the type of music that you don't normally see on Broadway that is really pushing these musicals. So that leaves us with Xanadu. Oh my gosh, so are yes. you saying, do you think Xanadu will win? I wouldn't, you know, there is going to be a big tide, I think, toward In the Heights. Okay, and yeah. possibly Passing Strange, but I do think Xanadu will win Best Book of a Musical because it's got the best book of a musical. Look, Douglas Carnaby ah. gave us the little dog laugh last, last season, Right. took a really bad movie, and turned it into an incredibly funny musical. Good point. I and mean, he won the drama desk also, Douglas Carnaby. Yeah, so he's got it, yeah. Look, look at what you have in this show. It's funny. It's not the staging. It's got a good cast. You know, it's got music that we know and love, but the book is really what makes this show work. Huh. This is the guy who deserves it. So, and so it sounds like if Young Frankenstein were on the list, you'd vote for it, but since it isn't... I, you'd feel go, like I would still strongly consider Xanadu. You'll go with Xanadu, and you figure that it's a possibility if In the Heights doesn't completely sweep, Bean will take it uh, for Xanadu here. Yeah. Let's go very quickly. Which, which do you think will get the best play? Uh, August Osage County, Rock and Roll, Seafarer, or 39 Steps? Well, it's interesting. Uh, to me, it, it comes down to August Osage County and the 39 Steps. Okay. August Osage County is this wonderfully strong drama, and it piles disaster upon disaster, and I normally hate that type of play. Uh, but Tracy Letts has done it so well and so beautifully, and the characters are so rich that somehow they pull it off beautifully. Okay. Now, I think it will win the Tony. I would actually would be very happy, though, to see the 39 Steps win the Tony, simply because that is, again, it's, it's taken a movie. I actually haven't seen the 39 Steps, although they recently broadcast it on uh, Turner uh, Classic Movies uh-huh. uh, as, as a result of the play. But it is so cleverly done. The way they've reshaped it, the way they staged it, how these, I think it's four actors, yeah. pull this whole mega drama off and to actually make it into a mega comedy. It is just so clever. And unfortunately, comedy is generally not appreciated at award time. So I think it will be uh, August Osage County. Well, uh, which has some comedy in it, too, but it's, it's basically drama. What about yes, musical? Yes. For, uh, for musical, Cry Baby in the Heights, Passing Strangers, Anadu. Okay, well, uh, sounds like we have the identical list. Um, to, actually, uh, yes, as, as for the um, as, 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 for for the best, as for the best book. Now, again, I, where is Young Frankenstein? Good point. Okay, I would swap that for Cry Baby immediately. Again, someone, someone, uh, someone is unhappy with Mel this, this season. Got it. Um, now, I would not be upset to see Xanadu get the best musical, but I think it will be in the heights. It comes on, it's fresh, and it's strong. Now, Passing Strange is fresh also, but not quite as strong story-wise as In the Heights. I think In the Heights succeeds more than Passing Strange. Both are innovative, but Passing Strange, I just think, is a better Broadway musical. 
Well, Charlie, I want to thank you for scaling the heights, sometimes <laughs> the strange ones, with us on this Tony Award special. Um, just want, you've got to tell everybody really, really quickly, please, but um, you've got a show of your own. It isn't yes. going to be on Broadway, but maybe someday. Well, we're, we're hoping. It's, it's a one-man show, kind of a Spalding Gray meets Jerry Steinfeld with uh, just a little of How I Met Your Mother for good measure. It is called How I Found an Affordable Apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan Without Really Trying. And it will be part of the uh, Midtown Theater Festival uh, this summer. It's uh, only four performances in uh, July and August. Um, what does it feature? Well, affordable apartments, uh, the blackout of 2003, 9-11, and a 1979 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Go to www.ticketcentral.com, and you can get tickets only $18 for How I Found an Affordable Apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan without really trying. Well, Charlie, you're charming and smart without even trying, and that's why we love you here on this station, on my regular show, Dave's Gone By, and as part of the Tony Award special. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure to be a part of it.